can I just say how out of character it is for me to be doing this? <laughs> Every single fiber of my being is asking me to sit down. Down where it's dark, which is all of it. <laughs> down where it's anonymous. Down where it's safe. Here, on the other hand, it's bright. I'm standing here alone in front of a crowd rather than being a part of the crowd. This feeling, the worker bee does not like. Worker bees are a part of the collective and they try very hard not to draw attention to themselves. I should know. I was programmed from a very young age to be a conforming worker bee. Content to work hard, color inside the lines, and never rock the boat. I didn't stand out. I didn't want to stand out. And that's what makes it so difficult. So if conforming was an Olympic sport, I'd be on the podium, for sure, together with everybody else. So for most of my life, I continued conforming, staying on the sidelines, supporting other people with their dreams and their projects. I could have quite happily carried on, but for a persistent niggling feeling that something wasn't quite right. This niggling feeling got so bad, it started interfering with all the MKR and MasterChef I was trying so very hard to watch. <laughs> and what was this feeling? I didn't have a clue until the day I attended a forum. The forum was titled, In an Imperfect Democracy, How Can the Individual Make a Difference? Sure. There were lots of good, positive sentiment. But mainly, there were just lots of people saying things like, no, but of course we can't. It's the government, it's the rules, budget cuts, policies, procedures, all these very many helpless things that we tell ourselves why our hands are tied. I realized that that wasn't who I wanted to be. I want to feel powerful. I want to be the kind of person that takes action, makes things better for when things aren't working, for the things I care about. But I knew that to do that, I'd have to give up my worker B values, beliefs and status. To do what I needed to do, I had to draw on the power and strength of the queen bee. Ta-da! <laughs> Which is a thought as liberating as it was terrifying. So with this new intention in mind, I had to look at what I could possibly do to contribute. For a while now, I'd been donating to a few different charities, inconsistently, small amounts every now and then. And one of them is a not-for-profit called The Hunger Project. The Hunger Project is part of a movement to end world hunger with the belief that the hungry themselves are key to ending their own hunger. This message for self-reliance really resonated with me. It was time to do more. And so I committed to what was to me the big, hairy, audacious goal of fundraising $5,000 to support the Hunger Project's education and leadership programs in countries like India and Bangladesh. Daunting though the prospect was, I knew that the only way for me to make it work was to let go of the worker bee, <laughs> which is comforting and safe, and to head out into uncharted territories with my new partner, the queen bee. So now I had to think, how am I going to raise this bloody $5,000? <laughs> and I decided quite early on that I was going to do things that were real and tangible and offered value to other people. I wanted to bring the community together and I wanted to have some fun in the process. 
My first project was a cooking class called Recipes from My Mother. A Japanese chef friend tapped into her childhood memories and she created five dishes her mother prepared for her to bring to school in a bento box. It was a small step, but it was vital because it was my first step. From a cooking class for 12, I moved on to a full-fledged conference for 80 people. I wanted to create a day that celebrated ideas, quite like today. And so, the meaning of a Good Life conference was born. There were four speakers who shared their different ideas. A jazz band played during the break. There was free coffee and organic coconut flour samples for everyone. It was held in a light, airy conference hall. People were smiling. People were engaged. So all the things I loved best in one day. But, there's always a but, isn't it? It wasn't easy putting the conference together. The first thing I struggled with was the discipline and commitment it took to focus a huge part of my energy on a non-work-related project, especially after giving up all my energy at work. I spent countless hours contacting people and putting out proposals. And a lot of times, these hours would be wasted when it resulted in a no. I was so scared people wouldn't come for the conference I handed out fly flyers to strangers after book readings. Similar to what Spruikers do at the comedy festival, only I wasn't half as cool. <laughs> and I, I wondered if perhaps I should just work part-time over the weekend and raise my $5,000 that way. There were also personal barriers that I struggled with. And I remember contacting a potential speaker after work one day, and I wasn't sure what I wanted more, for him to pick up or not to pick up the phone. True, I had a script that I'd practiced numerous times before, but there is a barrier. There's a mental barrier that I've always struggled with. The thing is, my barrier is that I have an accent that I actually detest. I have an Asian-American Sesame Street call center voice. My voice <laughs> is made my voice is made for selling car insurance and singing karaoke. <laughs> and, and you may laugh, but imagine trying to use this voice to contact people who don't know you from a bar of soap. But I have to say that um, I got over my voice after about the 50th call, which was a good thing because there were another 50 more calls to go. But I have to say, it does get easier. Because this year, my team and I are putting together another conference. This time, focusing on courage and drawing on my Chinese heritage. Courage comes from the Latin word core or heart. But the Chinese have a slightly different take on it. Courage in Mandarin is yong qi. Yong is bravery, while qi is the force, the inner energy of life that draws you forward from within. Speakers will be sharing their raw and bold ideas. There'll be a Kung Fu demonstration. It'll be a marriage between Eastern wisdom and Western ideas. It will ask of the audience, including myself, what would we do if we weren't afraid? I'm looking forward to the day to find out what our collective answers are. It's only today that I realize how very far the worker bee has come. And in going through the journey, I've picked up a lesson, or two, or three. Allow me to share some of my most favorite, favorite learnings with you because they've made a difference to me. One of the first things that I picked up was that people really want to help. People really want to say yes. In fact, they're just waiting to be asked. There are free things everywhere. And sometimes, we have a value exchange that transcends more than just dollars and cents. I spoke to my bosses and they gave me the kitchen for free. They donated the ingredients as well. The chefs thought for free. A good friend designed a flyer. I reached out to a university professor that played in a jazz band. They played for free. Companies booked blocked seats for their staff. Professional speakers shared of their wisdom. Everywhere I looked, 
everybody was willing and able and generously giving of the time, money, love, encouragement and support. But guess what? These are not new resources. They've always been there. They were just waiting for me to ask. Secondly, I experienced the contagious power of good energy. Good energy infects good energy, like good zombies. <laughs> and, the, and at the core of it, human beings really want to help other human beings achieve great things. When I gave of myself and my time to a cause that was larger than me, people came on board. And the only thing that I had to do, really, the only thing that I had to do was to take care and maintain my own energy. Because when I harnessed and focused it, great things happened. Which I really wouldn't have found out if I'd just done an online BPay transfer to a charity of my choice. And put in a gold coin into a tin every now and then. I also realized that in being the worker bee, I kept myself safe and anonymous within the collective. Don't get me wrong. I'll always be supportive, and there are parts of me that will always love being lost in a crowd. But every hive needs both worker bees and the queen bee. And in living life only as a worker bee, I was missing out on some pretty spectacular experiences. Which brings me to my last and perhaps most important realization. I used to be the kind of person that asked, how important is the individual? What truly can one person do? But I realize now that all it takes is one person to start the ball rolling. All it takes is one person to set things in motion. And then you'll have something remarkable that never existed before. And what can one person do? One person can set a ripple effect that has far-reaching consequences and outcomes. From the fundraising events, new communities have been formed and new friendships forged. Friends of friends have become friends with a cross-pollination of causes as each new friend supports with the time and money for causes that were important to each other. It can compel a good friend to raise $10,000 and it can inspire an 18-year-old to go from I can't to perhaps I can, to I will. Sitting in this room today are so many projects, both big and small, that have the power to change the world. Sitting in this room today are communities that have yet to be formed and ripples that have yet to be cast. Imagine a world in which all of us crafted projects that had positive impact on the world. Imagine a world if each of us right now went outside and raised a thousand dollars for a cause we each believed in through projects that made our hearts sing. This would be a 100k room right here and that would be a lot of toilets built, food delivered, animals rescued. In an imperfect world, can an individual make a difference? But of course, the individual is the difference. The individual is everything. After all, we may just be one, but one is plenty. Thank you.